everybody welcome back to this segment of a writer's world it's your girl Whitney and today we are going to be talking about how to handle a heartbreak Lord Jesus this can literally be applied to I want to say everything that's going on in your life because it's not so much so just focused on if you get a heartbroken out of a relationship right um, or like a romantic relationship this is for literally any type of bond that may have severed that you may feel a heartbreak towards so if you guys are interested in continuing for it and learning what I have to say then keep on watching so on this first tip I want to tell you one don't go looking for other prospects Okay, so when you lose that bond and you're feeling heartbroken, this is the time that you need to be 100% in yourself. Like you don't need to be putting this type of energy, whatever type of energy that you once had into anybody else. Why? Because it's not going to be genuine. You're going to be putting in the same energy that you once had before into somebody else and they're not going to 100% be like, we don't know if they're going to be welcome to that energy. You may be leading them on. You may be treating them like the last person and you might very well end up making a huge mistake so for example say you got out of a, like a five-year relationship and like three weeks later you're dating somebody else or you're talking to this other guy and you're like oh let me do this for you let me do that for you oh let's go get dinner or anything like that like going out, out on dates fine sure whatever but when you go the extra mile for that person you could be leading them on and they could be having really good feelings for you and then a couple months later you're probably like oh well I'm not feeling it using him as a rebound that's hurting them for one and you don't want to be giving somebody else a heartbreak after you're good like coming over another one right and then also you might be embarrassing yourself so to avoid all of that embarrassment let's just calm down and not look for any other prospects you feel me this is this should be this probably potentially could be number one as well don't get drunk I've never let me stop let me stop lying okay I feel like getting over a romantic relationship everyone should kind of have one of those days where they're like crying really really hard because I think once you get the feelings out then it's just like you know that in this moment you will never ever ever let anyone ever make you feel this way ever again and I learned that lesson the hard way and so with that feeling whenever their name pops up you'll be reminded of how you were how pathetic and like uh, down in the dumps and rock bottom you were like in that moment that's when I feel like that's what their name would be associated with so then you would never go back to them right but you don't need alcohol if you're hurt if you're heartbroken you really think you need alcohol to like fix that for you to make you get to that point no I genuinely don't think so I think after a heartbreak when people like just want to get drunk it's kind of like okay now this is not healthy now you are starting to exhibit some very dangerous behavior sir and I don't want any part of it you're my friend you know I'm a ride or die for you no matter what but baby girl this isn't the way to go like <laughs> this is not what we're doing we're not trying to do this here we're not trying to get drunk getting drunk will not get you over the person getting drunk will temporary alle temporarily alleviate your feelings and even that's not true because you're just hiding them you're easier at hiding them oh now like now you have is liquid courage and then when we get home we're gonna be bawling our eyes out because we're drunk and we're not having fun anymore and we like reality just slammed you in your face and all that liquid courage is now your tears. You feel me? So don't get drunk. Don't get drunk. Let's just not do it. Three, I am telling you guys, filling up your time with other things to do, which is like getting new hobbies, hanging out with your friends more, finding things to do to take up your time will definitely get your mind off of whatever heartbreak you're enduring, whatever set a bond was severed anything along those lines it would train you to stop thinking about the hurt it would train you to continue forward and to continuously put one leg in front of the other if you're constantly telling yourself okay i'm gonna wake up at 6 a.m i'm gonna go to the gym then i'm gonna eat breakfast well obviously not continuously tell yourself that but if you schedule yourself to do that you're gonna be focused on doing one task after the other that you won't have time to be thinking about what's hurting you and i know that's easier said than done but it comes with practice right it comes with practice 
is. We're not looking for other prospects. We're not getting drunk, which is not going to help us. It's just going to bring the feelings to the surface, right? And I'm not saying to bottle the, the feelings down inside. No, that's not what we're doing at all. What we're doing is trying to fill up our time so that way we can heal, so that way we can get through the process a lot smoother than doing dangerous things, right? Doing dangerous acts and being detrimental to our bodies, to our souls, and to our mental fortitude. That's not what we want to do at all. We don't want to just, you know, not have a game plan of how to continue forward in this heartbreak and then fall and continuously fall in rock bottom. And then all of a sudden you're living there and can't get back. We don't want that. Filling up your time allows you to, and I'm about to get into my next tip, it allows you to remind yourself of who you are. Quite often, for me in my experience, I definitely lost who I was in the process of me being in that sort of relationship, right? And when I received, when I was going through the heartbreak, I was trying to find ways to understand who I am as a human being. Who was I before I met them? Who was I that, you know, and this can kind of get dangerous because then you could start thinking like, well, who was I that made them leave? Who was I that like, drove them away or made them stop loving me or like what did I do to make them not be my friend anymore because heartbreaks when losing a friend is a real thing and so it's like a grieving process right so you have to treat your body treat yourself and treat your mind like you're going through a grieving process because this is just this is like one step in front of the other this is something that everybody needs to do in order for us to continue forward and thrive because we don't want to stay in this sad, sad bubble of heartbreak and just, you know, fester in all the negativity. That's not what we want to do at all. We want to remind ourselves of who we are. Remind yourself what hobbies you do, what, what you love to do, what sort of career goals did you have that you might have altered to fit the person that you were with, right? Sometimes that happens. I know that I got caught up in that as well, is that I started changing my goals because I wanted to fit into the person that they were becoming rather than focusing on myself. What is it that I like to do? I love, I love horror and thriller um, movies. I'm gonna start watching that again. I just love watching movies in general. I love the whole vibe of it. I love going, I love eating the popcorn. I love the community, just like I love watching football. I love the community. But there was a lot of things that I stopped doing because my partner didn't like it or wouldn't join me in those things so I was like okay well I'm gonna start liking what he likes that happens sometimes right like let's be honest with ourselves sometimes and quite often we lose ourselves in the process of trying to keep somebody that was never supposed to be kept so what are we gonna do we're gonna find ourselves again we're gonna do hobbies we're gonna hang out with our friends we're gonna write down a list of pros and cons of why we will never go back to that person and pros and cons of what we would like to fix in ourselves and get us back to our true identity who are you lastly this is so important that i believe that the first four tips literally it'll help but if you don't have this moment then it will be a long process i want you to allow yourself to feel because we can't we can't necessarily get through a heartbreak get through any anything that's really detrimental to us if we don't allow ourselves to feel if we kind of like take our feelings and just throw it to the side or push it under the rug and say okay i'm just not gonna feel guess what's gonna happen you're gonna bottle it up and one day whether that be tomorrow or five years from now is gonna come out and it's gonna come out like a raging lion and devour everything that's in its path and you're gonna look around at all this rage and be like where did this come from it came from the time where you had a heartbreak and you didn't handle it properly if you don't allow yourself to feel throughout the different stages of grief and throughout the different stages of losing somebody of a heartbreak you will not be in a healthy place and then now we have all these issues that all of a sudden arise right now all of a sudden we're struggling with attachment issues all of a sudden we're struggling with anxiety social anxiety a lot of things a lot of mental let me say this properly there's a lot of negative repercussions to not handling yourselves correctly, to not handling your feelings correctly. And I understand 1000% that nobody, like the first time you go through something, it is rare to handle that correctly. And even if it's not your first time, the fact that you, my, ugh, this is so hard, because like my thing is loyalty. And if I feel like I am being betrayed, that is literally, oh, that literally hurts my heart so much that I react and that's like I feel like 
to this day I still need to work on that because well one because I'm 23 and two because like I still haven't mastered I don't want to say not thinking before reacting because I definitely think before I react but if somebody betrays me that's when it just goes out the window like where I'm just like what are you talking about blah blah blah, blah. like that's when I just like start going and when you're in a heartbreak you just go you just feel and you're just like what do you mean because everything that you once had is slowly crumbling to the depths of your core and so like your heart is here and then all of a sudden it's just I didn't mean to give you all that visual <laughs> my bad but like it, it's very it's very sensitive and we need to treat heartbreaks just like so we need to treat it like it is a heartbreak whether you like it or not you're going through this and it's quite often or sometimes may not be maybe all the time I don't know the situation but it could very well be your fault or it could not. Either way, there's something that needs to be done, right? We need to handle our feelings. We need to know how to handle our feelings. We need to understand how am I going to manage this heartbreak? Because this is what we need to do. We don't want to bring anybody else down in our, I don't want to call it misery, but in our heartbreak, right? And we want to lift up everyone else or we just want to lift ourselves up in the moment because we don't want to feel that anymore. I would not wish a heartbreak on anybody. It is not a great feeling, obviously, because it's a heartbreak, but it's really, truly, I, I literally, there's a lot of people that I do not like, and I wouldn't wish it on them because it is not a good feeling. Not a good feeling. Thank you guys for listening to me today. Hopefully I was insightful, I was helpful. Hopefully you guys got something from this video. I really, really hope that I have helped anyone and everyone in any way that I can, even if it is just one person. Don't forget you guys, I do have a segment on my channel called A Writer's Scope, where you guys send to me whatever issues, problems, et cetera, et cetera, that you may have. It really doesn't matter what it is. Send it to my email, it's on the screen. Don't be shy, also don't forget, like I will automatically keep you guys anonymous unless you say otherwise. I already got three videos in the bank and I'm just waiting to populate y'all. Like I'm just waiting to populate that segment. It's called A Writer's Scope. The email is on the screen and if you don't see it on the screen, what you are doing is definitely down in the description box below. While you're down there, don't forget to like, subscribe, follow me on all of my social medias. It's there as well. It's all the same Twitter, Instagram, and Snapchat a writer's world underscore that's it that's simple follow me and don't forget i think i said that already but turn on your post notifications turn it to always all right don't turn it to never turn it to always or turn it to predicted whatever the other option is but never to never all right guys i love talking to you and i'll see you next week thanks